make sure it's recording this time. I've done this entire video. Yep, it recording. Okay, we're good. All right, hello, 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 all you beautiful people. I'm here to talk about Evil Dead the Game, the Necromancer. A rather interesting demon. Warlord does the AoE buffing around its units. Puppeteer is puppeteer. But the Necromancer is a bit of an oddball. The, the units have shields, which means uh, some melee weapons just straight up are in incredibly ineffective. They are su extremely susceptible to ranged damage. The Flautist gives a shit ton of damage reduction. I'm pretty sure it's 90% um, attack damage and 50% damage reduction. And that's not health, that's damage reduction, which is extremely useful for all units within its rank. And they're mainly ability-based. The uh, Elite is all about the Trident Slam and the Trident Throw. The basic unit is all about the Thrust and the War Cry. And Ash is all about his Summon and Resurrect abilities and his Life Drain a little bit if you want to spec into that. But more than anything, more than absolutely anything, how to play Necromancer. Do you rush Elite units with traps? You can if you want. But it typically doesn't work that great if there's an Amanda on the team. Do you rush down the enemy with a shit ton of units? Believe it or not, that's exactly what I'm here to vouch for today. I'm advocating for Skeleton Army of Darkness creation spam. Create an actual army of darkness. Not a squad of darkness, not a platoon of darkness, a goddamn army. And on objectives, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. My build will come at the very end of the video. I'll put a link to it so that you can see why I'm doing it. I'll point out um, different skill point allocations taking effect when they do within the game. So, this is a game that I played last night. I'm going to commentate over it. I'm going to put general demon tips in here as well. But in general, it's just general gameplay tips, how I play, how I like to play, and hopefully someone can find some use out of this. Skip forward a little bit. If it'll let me. Loading time's really nice. I don't have to skip that far forward. Uh, this game actually goes all the way to the wire, which is why I think I like to show it. Because, you know, you you're never going to win Linda, at the very beginning, the especially against Chris Lovers. Uh, I'm doing a bit Join of a triangulation us, thing. Um, one thing that I've noticed lap. you can do. I see some people saying the triangulation method is the best. I disagree. After I, playing a bunch of demon games, crush. I definitely think a better method to do to determine where the survivors are. Think of it like lines let's say you look on the map as soon as you spawn look at the objectives the triangulation method typically works like this you take the objectives and you draw a line in between where you spawn in there that gives me literally no use here it could be any and so here is my method call it the line method you draw a line directly in between both of these now it's this simple the survivors are on either side of this line. They're to the left of the line, or to the right of the line, above or below it. Nine times out of ten, the survivors will be on the side of the line where the bigger section of the map is. So if there's more on one side, they're going to be on that side. I know in some, like, if it spun at Lucky Valley and Fishing Village, I know that wouldn't really help. But it helps on this position, because it's directly through the center of the map. This is the average spawn, I suppose. Now, I don't find them in this game for a really, really long time. So I, I have to 50-50 guess because of how, the you know, how shitty this average stand. spawn is. And so I decide to go south more than anything. Um, mainly so that even if there is no one there, I can circle back around and I can trap the dagger on my way up around the, map, the left side of the map. I do like a circular they rotation. The secret of our um, when leveling up. World, now here at threat level, trying to get this as quick as them. possible. Here's my biggest recommend. Only trap... If you, if you know there's a page there, or if you know there is a map piece there, there's almost no other reason unless you're right on the edge of a threat level. Chests only cost 35 infernal energy, and they give you 100 threat level. Learning different spots on maps, like this tunnel, or the waste treatment plant, or places like that on different maps where a lot of chests typically spawn. Learning those spawns allows you to level up stupid fast. Like... Right now, what are we? We're not even a minute into the game, and I am already threat level three. Now, let me tell you, I'd be pretty terrified of that as a survivor. So, before we go any further, how do I upgrade? What are my skills? What do I do for threat level? 
Here's my biggest recommendation recommendation for this kind of build for Necromancer. Put two into Inferno Energy, one into Basic, and then Inferno Energy, at least get it to three. Get that passive regen, and then from there, go apeshit. Do whatever you want. You should have found them by that point. If you're always moving, you should be completely fine. Just go for it. Your um, were they take a little bit. They take the a minute and 30 to find this map piece. piece. That's actually really map. good for me. It actually now takes them a long while. Uh, I realize on the map, oh, Bluff Road Bridge is there. I know that there's a chest there. I'm going to go grab that because that'll get me an upgrade. Uh, it would take me three trap places to do this where I can just walk over here. Boom, threat level four, two minutes into the game. All right, I go for two there, go for basic. And this gives me that passive. Again, this is something I don't think people realize a lot. That passive ability regen is extremely handy. Being able to stay on an objective even when it's not active, stay around people without having to take 10, you know, it, it, the difference between five seconds to 10 seconds of collecting infernal energy really helps. And it matters. And this is a game of seconds. It's a game of delay and stalling the survivor team. And you can absolutely do that with any other method. I just enjoy this one the most. So I realize, hey, they're not on this side of the map. They would have literally had to because, you know, there's only one spot down there. They would have moved north away from that if they had found a map piece. So I decide to go around here and trap the dagger up a bit. This saves me from having to go do it later. This is basically the only time I'd recommend trapping. Uh, I know it's a chest there. It is worth it to go up around and grab that because it'll level me up and give me a decent bit of progress towards the next level. Yeah, it gives me about a fifth. That's nice. Uh, I realize I probably shouldn't be wasting this for time, but three minutes and I haven't found them. If I don't find them quick, they're going to start um, definitely finding map problems. I place a proximity basic portal there because I know they're going to go there. And I realize, hey, they must be somewhere up here. And so that's where I go. I start making my way up north. There's not that much. Circuit K just typically has a few chests. Lucky Valley Lodge does. And at this point, I come up here. Uh, I see this crevasse here. This is a really fun place. See the chest here? I go for it. And as soon as I get close enough, oop, they're up at Lucky Valley. That's awesome. I see that they're up at Lucky Valley right now. Uh, I trap, always trap the mouth of this crevasse, by the way, because they have to get out that way. I notice that they're up here. This must be where they found the map. They're in the basement. They're looting up. I just start placing down a bunch of units. Uh, I, I'm literally, my whole objective is to just make it absolute hell up here for this solo Cheryl. I have the flute up. They're not going to take much damage. She's just going to run for her life. These two are still downstairs. They're still looting up while they're having to solo all this. Those shields that they're doing, they're being chewed through very fast. I place this one little trap just to delay them a little bit. It doesn't seem to get them. It doesn't get them. I can't remember. And they finally come up here. On the dark attack does. He's going to play through this. I go for a scare. I get it off. Bunch of energy. Decent bit of threat level. The flute is still up. Now, right now, there's literally nothing for me to do. This is a pretty sparse area. And so I just go around looking for places to trap. There's a trap back here. I go for that. Uh, because of the scared. Gates of Hell upgrade I have on the skill tree, I already have another basic unit up. You saw it jump from 5 to nothing. Uh, I think it's bugged the timer, but it is faster than it actually says it is. Uh, they finally run back. They go for the flautist. She's trying to get her fear down. Godspeed to her, I suppose. Best thing to do at this moment. Army of Darkness Dash is getting his pretty far up. Uh, I'm still rushing down basic portals as much as I can. Being able to summon three, especially with the cloud, is not very nice. Uh, I get this tree set up. Uh, I see at this point we're about five minutes into the game. Um, decent bit of pressure, decent bit of damage, only one map fragment. If I can delay them like this, I can delay them from finishing the entire game. Uh, I realize they're going to have to push down this way because they're pushing down into Circuit Cave. I don't think that's for loot. I'm assuming, because um, I've played a survivor, and this is something I want to like make a note of. As Survivor, I have noticed that, typically speaking, this isn't a, a definitive rule, but typically speaking, map fragments will be in places where you can draw a straight line in between them, and there won't be a place in between those spots. They won't typically be, you know, one side of the map, other side of the map, other side of the map. They will be close to each other, or at least connected. Like, you could run from one to the other to the other without having to go through anywhere else if you want to rush it down. And so, they're heading south to Circus Cages, outright. That's exactly where they're going. And so I must assume, hey, there's a map fragment here, so I need to really start trapping this place up. Uh, I've delayed them here long enough. It must be somewhere to the south, maybe in those buildings, because they didn't find it up in the northern section. I decide, hey, I'm going to put the Flutus down there, so they have to A, either jump down into the pit, or B, use ammo. I'm not really doing much damage to them. The basic units aren't leveled up enough, even though I have the damage upgrades. 
They are fairly useless unless you get that up, but I also stack buffs on them regardless, so it's not a complete loss. I see Pablo jumps down. Now, I'm thinking about this. Pablo jumps down. I know that I have trapped this chest. He's about to get mini assed He's going to lose one of his amulets or whatever he has. And my basic units are about to come off cooldown. A plan formulated in those few seconds. He's down here in a place with one exit, and I've already trapped that exit. I can get rid of all that, at least half that shield, by spawning a bunch of units. I go for Portal Elite because I see the amount of energy that I have. Uh, I place some basic units behind him. I realize I need some Infernal Energy to place down a basic portal. Uh, this passive regeneration is saving me about one Infernal Orb that I would need. Uh, it, it gives me some change after the fact. I see that he runs here, he goes through this. Uh, I do a bit of a shoddy job placing this Elite because he runs the opposite way. But, boom, his fear's all the way up because of the Scalophobia trait on the skill tree and half of his amulets are now useless because I just deleted half the shield bar. These guys are still, the they're in this house over Try here. This is where the map was apparently, at the south of Lucky Valley. Uh, I placed that trap there in case they run out before I'm done placing that. Um, I realized, hey, there's an opportunity to spawn quite a few skeletons here. Their fear is pretty high up. I just want to do a small bit of delay, stop them from going to the next one as possible. What I do is I place this trap, I place this flautist here, and I place two basic skeletons around the corner. That flautist is not so he won't destroy it, it's so he'll trigger the trap in the back and be absolutely surrounded by a ton of basic skeletons. Now he's doing this. This is mainly just to keep him here, because he is the ad clear. Ar Army of Darkness Ash is the meta ad clear character. I decide not to stick around him, he'll just get his shield back from finishing them, that's just a delay more than anything. I see the Cheryl by themselves, I set this trap in case they go off for it, and then here, here is... Here is, in my opinion, where this game turns. This Ed here, right? This Ed is making a terrible mistake. Not only is he running alone, he is running with one map fragment left. Tell me, why would he be running directly to one section of the map? Oh, because he's running the Misery Manor. He has docked the final map piece location to me. And it's only him, so I can literally just keep him here. I decide, okay, I'm gonna sell him as much as possible, I'm gonna set up traps, I'm gonna delay as much as possible, and I do keep him here for a long time. Um, either he finds it down here at the south, or it's up at the northern part of the mystery man. Uh, I get boss just so it's in my back pocket. I trap this place as much as possible. When this far into the game, that every single unit is going to matter. And so I just place down absolutely as many as possible. I place the flutist back there just for the damage reduction to waste even more of this dude's time. He is just chewing through these units, but it does not matter. It is wasting his time. I see here that I'm not going to hit this. So I click the right click button to cancel it, and it's only a 10 second cooldown. That's a really effective way to delay the um, usage of your, um, you know, jump scare. Uh, I already have it if I wanted to use it again. It's extremely good to not waste that or miss that, so it is worth it to take the shorter cooldown and miss it. I see here that, yeah, he's going to keep chewing through these guys. I'm going to go start trapping up here because I want to have at least two basic units stockpiled for me to spawn before they actually get up here. I assume he's just going to beeline it up here. I didn't realize that his fear was really, really high, and so he was probably not too keen on running solo up here. I see, oh god, look at that, the map piece is there, and so, yeah, it's up here, like I assumed it was, I think I said something like that a few seconds earlier. I see this house over here. Uh, I realize, hey, let me first look at what the situation around the map is. I see that there's no portal, so I place a proximity. That elite there should be able to keep them in the house. I get uh, maxed basics. That's really nice. I, I see that up here might be a good place for the flautist because it's a little out of the way. You have to go up through all this. And so I place it here to buff any of the traps that go off just to keep it. I have the extended flute range. It'll cover a very wide area. I'm not worried about it. I set this tree trap in case they zigzag through the traps over there, because some people will do that. And I see this house over here. A plan formulates. I see the chest there, and I see the trap here. I realize, man, this is a really good place to spawn flautists, actually. So what I plan on doing is, once they figure out where that flautist is, I won't play this <laughs> little head nod. I won't place it in the same place twice. I am going to place the flautist back there once they get on the point, because it's further away, it'll force them to get off the point, it'll be really nice. Uh, you see there, the passive Inferno a regen made it so I didn't have to go off and away in order to trap that chest. It just gave me the last point I needed. I just had to wait a few seconds. And that's worth it. So 
I see over here that most of them seem to arrive. Uh, I knew, I know with the benefit of hindsight, I didn't know this at the time, but Pablo is with Army of Darkness Ash. They have split up in order to gain a bunch more healing and shield items, which is the fair thing to do at this point. I did deal a decent amount of damage, but I see if they're here. Okay, so these two, I assume they're on their own. I assume, hey, they'll just move up and assist them. So I'm like, okay, I'll just place down a shit ton of portals if they've treasured them here, that kind of thing. Oh, sorry, a bit of a skip there. Nothing super interesting happened. I just kind of delayed them for a bit. What's worth seeing? Effectively, at this point, uh, I, I, I'm just spitballing for time. I, I've wasted 11 minutes of the game. I just want to waste as much as possible. I want to replace it up here because I still think it's the best spot for covering this area. I'm able to place it after a try or two. It's a little finicky sometimes. So I see over here, oh, chest, more threat level, better go grab this, even though they'll never grab this chest, because it's a white chest directly from skill point. Uh, I see that they are starting to move up now. And so she second dives, she, she goes in between those traps, like I said earlier, so the tree gets her. I gets a bit of fear on her. That trap triggers, I didn't realize the door out the back there she runs out of was open, and because of that, she's just able to chew through those mobs, which does kind of suck, but that's my fault for not looking, I suppose. So the flute is up, so the damage reduction makes it so they can't just instantly, you know, execute all of them and be safe. Uh, yeah, Pablo and Army of Darkness, this one I realized that they were together at that point. And so they're there, Skelophobia is getting Army of Darkness Ashes fear up, I'm keeping an eye on that. I decide to just chew through a bunch of their time, summon six basic skeletons over there, go ahead. I assume, hey, they're not gonna abuse the page immediately, even though it's right there. Uh, they're not doing the greatest, they're not exactly capped up on health, I don't think they want to spawn it immediately, I'll just run around and grab some infernal energy. Oh shit, they just activated the page immediately. Now I didn't, I did not expect them to do this, this is a ballsy move, given by my standards. I, I, I realize boss is probably not the best thing to go for here, they're still going to chew through him anyway, and so I need to chew through their ammo first. Now, I remember my backup plan, I go around the back here instead because it's a little bit further and they might not hear it if it's that much further away. It's really hard to hear the flautist if there's stuff going on. Skeletons fighting, guns going up, cars being driven. If all that stuff is going off, it's a little bit harder to uh, hear what's going on. It is here that I spawn boss. Now what do I do immediately upon spawning this boss? I see a lot of people saying, oh, he can do a ton of damage, he's extremely useful. I think he's the weakest combat-wise of all the bosses. Here's what I do. I immediately start spamming as a resurrection because the second that ability goes off at max upgrade. The second it does, that is 30 seconds in a huge zone where nothing is going to permanently die. In fact, I have come back stronger on the skill tree, so everything is going to come back with 40% health and 40% damage increases. And that's a 40% health increase, not damage reduction. So that stacks with the flute. I, I don't know the exact math for it, but that is a lot of extra health. That's almost double from what I can remember. You wouldn't think, but it, it effectively is with stacking both of those. I also, animation cancel out of the resurrection. You can press one while that animation is still going on to do the summon force reinforcement. I do this, and because of this, they start chewing through their ammunition, absolutely blasting. Pablo taking a bit of damage. Skeletons are resurrecting. He gets a cola off. I see here, wow. We're doing a decent bit of damage here. The war cry goes off there, a bit of damage there. Pablo's at about half health. I am at no health, so I do this to force one of them to stop fighting and come after me. He does that. Now, I am just constantly resurrecting all of these people. I can summon even more force to get a shit ton of skeletons on this point. The loot is still up at this point. And there is just a ton of damage. Everyone's around half health. We're doing a lot of slowdown here. I max off energy and put one more in the boss. I choose to possess this elite. Pablo goes down. I choose to go over here and try and get some damage off. Uh, he gets a shield off. It really doesn't matter. I'm still going to get the down. That is a lot of damage. 410 on that heavy. I still have the shield. I'm just being an annoyance at this point. Doing a bunch of damage. And, um... Yeah, at this point, I've got two points out of that. You get a point when you down someone, and another point when they bleed out. So I'm trying to prolong this, trying to make it harder for them to displace all these units off the point. Uh, the flute goes down to this point, so they are going to be able to start shooting through these a little more. I try and possess this elite unit here, but they shoot it, so I possess the um, basic, which they just fucking annihilate. So that's fair. 
Uh, at this point, I've done a ton of damage. I've leveled a ton off of this. Um, they're chewing through healing items. They don't seem to have the ability of share off cooldown. I said the street jumps with both fear and damage off. They, they are just taking a lot. Oh, all right. Here we this go. um, Point me at the th this is this kind of, of stacking so pressure is what this is. Now, at this point, I realize, hey, they're gonna finish this page. I can't really displace them. I'll try and do a possess. I don't realize he doesn't have a good melee weapon. But even then, it's still gonna get Pablo at least, you know, shaken in his boots. And that it does. I really suck with this saw gun. But I still get Pablo down again. That's another entire level of uh, threat. Wasting more and more of this shotgun ammo. And everyone's just in a pretty shitty headspace, I can imagine, right now. You just have all your friends going down. I get that. Gives a bunch more health to the elite units. That'll definitely help. That's their capstone. Uh, they get more damage and health. Very, very useful. I spawn these just for the threat level, even though I know they're going to get deleted. And because I have the Gates of Hell cooldown on basics, I don't. I, I think I can get them back fairly quickly. So, not work. so I'm about to be exercised. So what is my thought process here? I'm about to be exercised. There are two things that you can do here. As a demon, you can either go for the next objective and trap it, or go to where the survivors are and harass them, waste more time. We're at 15 minutes into the game. I've delayed them literally half the game time so far. And I realize, wait a minute, I already trapped the dagger. I don't have to go do that. And so I decide, I'm going to go and delay them even more. I could probably get it down on Cheryl. Things are looking really, really shitty for them right now. I'm just going to go and try and get as much pressure as I want. I got all my units upgraded to max. My boss cannot be stunned. I can snowball really, really quick here. I'm looking to get at least a little higher, maybe level 20, threat level 25 before they get to dagger. If I can pull that off, uh, we will be sitting happily. Sorry, just checking my um, checking my download there. Or, sorry, recording. I did this entire recording once and it didn't record, so just making sure. Uh, I placed the flautas here, like I said I was going to, behind all these traps. Uh, they're still chewing through these units, but it doesn't really matter to me. I'm just trying to delay all I can. Uh, I realize, hey, there are these cars here. Uh, I probably want to destroy these cars if I get the chance. Uh, even with the increased health and the damage reduction, Army of Darkness Ash is still going to chew through these units. They're going to run in there, go for the flautas. That's fine. Let them go for it. I'm just trying to spawn as much as I can, delay as much as I can. Uh, I'm going to circle around here. And grab these orbs. Okay. So I'm here. I see they're in this car. I start spawning some units. These units have increased health. They're going to do damage to the car when they try and run into them. That's going to be very, very useful. It, even though they're destroying, deleting these units. Even, they are, it still does a lot of damage to the actual car. And that's good. If I can do damage to this car, that's really useful. And yeah, there's me being absolutely dog shit with the saw gun. But basically with that, uh, these cars take a lot of damage. They probably decide not to go with them. They come in here to loot up and everything. Uh, I realize I need a bit more infernal energy. That's fine. I realize, hey, we're back here. There's a lot of energy out in this open area. Fuck it. My stuff's off cooldown. I'm just going to summon Flutus right here and start harassing the shit out of them with units. I don't care if I do any damage. I, don't, I just want to get their fear up and I want to waste their time. I go here for a jump scare, I get a super, that's threat level and energy out the wazoo. Uh, I see that my basic is almost off cooldown, I see that I have 190, which is under the addition of both these together. I summon the basic, I summon Evil Ash, I once again spam to get the resurrection ability up, and I animation cancel into the summoning more units. I cannot get stunned, so this chainsaw on Evil Ash is actually not a problem. The longer he spends wasting on the boss, the, the less damage he's going to be able to do to all of the units nearby. Now this here, this is why I play this. His two ability at max upgrade, I've already shown you how useful it is. It gets me two downs on a point because they just can't displace anything. But you see this red outline? That is the resurrection zone. Man, that's kind of interesting. Isn't he dead? Why is it still there? I don't know if it's a bug, I don't know if it's an exploit or a feature. I'll just consider it a feature with perks. Effectively, his resurrection zone stays around for about 10 seconds after he died. That was a sacrificial evil ash. Because let's be honest, even if they got in a car and drove right now, I would have evil ash off cooldown by the time they get to the dagger. I got plenty of time, I'm just stalling. And so anything that dies in this zone resurrects 
and I'm just wasting their time, they're wasting their ammo, everything's gonna come back so much stronger. Especially these elite units, even when they're not upgraded, they come back a whole lot stronger after all is said and done. I am keeping an eye on my flautist. I'm just keeping them here in big extended combat, separating them all I can, delaying their time, keeping them here as long as possible. And it is working. Uh, I'm getting decent bits of damage on fear and fear on all of them. And I realize, hey, uh, I'll spawn this elite unit and then... No, I actually decide to go up here, grab some energy, place the flautist up here out of the way. Is at this point, there's enough units killed that they're probably just going to start running. They're going to realize, hey, we need to stop wasting time here. And yeah, they do kind of start to realize, okay, we need to GTFO at this point. Uh, they're trying to get their fear down. Uh, well, at least Ash gets the memo, hey, I'm going to GTFO. I don't want to stay here anymore. He's just playing for time. They start to realize this. Uh, they're definitely trying to get away as fast as possible. I've got two of them on about half health. I'd say that was a worthwhile engagement. I got a bit of threat out of it. I got time wasting. We only have 10 minutes. 10 whole minutes. Now, here's what I noticed. I noticed Pablo is separating from the team. Now, I've already harassed the shit out of all of these guys. So what I do is I spawn a basic unit. And I realize, hey, Pablo's going to be fine. Even if he starts the event, I can get there in time. That's not a thing. I'll get hindsight. There are traps. I'm not worried. I see that everyone's kind of starting to spread out a little bit, and I decide, hey, it's probably better for me to slow these guys down on their way to the point. I see this Cheryl. This Cheryl has played very well and very defensively so far. They've been using a lot of their ammo. They're good with their dodges. I want to try and delay them as much as possible. I don't hit that scare, not because that's outside of the range, but because the elevation uh, launches me forward a little too much. Uh, I decide to trap this up a little bit, get a little more energy, that kind of thing. I see that Pablo is straight up rushing the dagger right now, so I realize, hey, maybe he's a little bit of a more danger point right now. I do not want him to start it yet. I already have this area trapped. They came through here already, so I'm okay and saying that that will delay them a little bit. I see Pablo is literally down there directly on top of the dagger. I do not know why he is down there, but he is. And so what I decide to do is start going in and just spawn an army on him. Delay him, because he's going to come here, he's going to do this. And I want to scare him the hell away from this point. I want to make an army. I want him to be terrified for his life. And I want him to run back to his team. And that's exactly what I do. He gets in the car, and I think he tries to delete some units, but then he realizes, okay, I just need to get the hell out of here. And um, yeah, he decides to GTFO. There's way too many units coming out of way too many portals here. And because he triggered these, a lot of these uh, have come off cooldown. And so even though his team is slowly starting to follow up, uh, a horde of skeletons is coming out of the woods. Uh, this is more than should be normally possible, of course, because I have the cooldown. I'll be able to summon even more. There's a ton of them coming out. Uh, this is slightly outside the flutus range. I know the run past here is a big tree. They will trigger that. I'm fine with waiting on that. So looking at this, place another proximity so that the cooldown, if, it, if I'm able to delay them for just a little bit longer, I might be able to you know, get use out of that. They are fluttering around. They're not really doing much. They're engaging. Uh, the Pablo, it looks like he's going to try and rush there. Three Flutist buff units go. And they haven't quite gotten off. They still haven't triggered the portal. I am keeping them right here. Look at the time. If they're looking at the time, they got to be sweating right now. And look at that. They're still stopping them from actually starting the event. Every second I stop them from starting that event is a second they don't spend completing the event. Self-evident, but that's what it's about. I'm buying for time, buying for seconds. I'm increasing the stress at the end. Because let's be real, they absolutely don't need to stress at all. They can finish this in seven minutes, absolutely. But what it does is, once that timer turns red, they start freaking the fuck out. And they start making mistakes, and they start freaking out that I can capitalize on that. And so what I'm going to do, just going to start spamming out units, as many as possible, create an army, summon Evil Ash, get him out, get his resurrection up. It'll cover almost the entire area of the actual area. And so that'll start resurrecting a bunch of stuff. I'm trying to just cover everything, hiding behind the brush on part of the hit. I see that he's here. I'm not worried about dying, of course. So if I can get a bit of free damage, I'm fine with that. The Flutist is up, so I do a bunch of damage. I get Pablo down. Oh god, yeah, look at that damage. That's insane. Oh, I get two downs off of that. That is a lot. All these guys keep coming back. Uh, a lot of 503 heavy attack damage. That's a ton. And so I'm getting a ton of damage off, a ton of health. 424, 233. Huge damage on even some of the tankiest characters in the game right now. And they are going to have to get out of here if they value their lives. 
they, they really should. I don't bother to get, I don't manage to get the grab off on him. Uh, they managed to get him up. They, Pablo is down. They won't have as many shields, which is really nice. But there is just so much here. It, it's insane. I've got three points off of this. I'm still at half Evil Ash health. I have been able to get a ton of use out of this boss summon. And even though they're slowly starting to clear out the units, they're just taking so much damage, so much fear. They're completely thrown out of proportion. I see that the uh, army is off cooldown. I don't see it for too long. I, did, I actually skip out on that, which kind of sucks. I really shouldn't. I noticed, hey, I have three points, and there's a bunch of traps around here. So what's my best plan at this point? I, uh, I realize my best plan at this point is to max out traps. Because these elite units are now buffed. Uh, they'll now do, have a lot more health and damage, and getting a bit of fear on it on this point is particularly really useful. I, I try and place it, I have a little bit of difficulty there, but I place an elite unit there, place this trap there, I go around and place the trap. Uh, it looks like they're going to get the dagger at this point, but I have just done so much damage. Uh, look at Army of Darkness Ash's health, and like they they just don't have any healing items to properly do this way. I go for a jump scare, I miss it, I, I absolutely fail at that. At this point, I'm just going to start maxing out possession. Army of Darkness Ash goes down. And, uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of damage here. And, yeah, a lot. I get the War Cry off. AoE lets me hit that. Literally, like I said, look, this hero is literally perfect on her dodges, pretty much. And that is extremely dangerous for me. But looking at this, we just have so much pressure here. It's in red numbers, but that doesn't matter but it's just got to be incredibly stressful for them, and that is the point. There is a lot. I go for this for the threat level. I get two levels out of it at the very end, and that's worth it. Okay, so at this point, we have got level 29. We're almost max level. The Dark Ones, we get the luckiest spawn I've ever gotten, even before that one. Look at how close we are. A god-tier respawn. We can keep this pressure going. We can just get right back on top of them and keep laying the hammer down. We need to be wary, and we need to delay them on the way to the Dark Ones. They're not near the edge of the map. They're close enough that they're not going to get killed by the zone or anything. But the more we delay them, the better. So effectively, my plan is just to run around, spawn as many as possible, and just absolutely delay the shit out of these guys. We have the ability to do so, and I might as well. I have a few traps that are sporadically placed right here. This Ludus is still here, from what I can hear. But we've got all these guys. Uh, I don't know why they would damage that. I'm pretty sure he's going to go down, right? I mean, you'd think you would. But no. Yeah, no. He, no, Pablo goes down. Yeah, no. I forgot the flute was there. Never mind. And with all these guys, it, it, it's just too much to deal with. It really is. They've got everyone going down. they got a ton of portals going off. This is a lot of pressure. Like I said, that Cheryl seems to be the one on top of things. She's looting up. She's trying to get... Um, some kind of healing on him to get her team back up. That's a good support player. They know what they're doing. Um, but but otherwise, all things considered... Well, no, she's a leader. I forget that. That's not Cheryl. I'm an idiot. That's Nobi. I've been saying Nobi. This I, oh, my God. No wonder they haven't been healing. I'm an idiot. Sorry about that. No, that's an Annie Nobi. And then the Pablo is the support. I always forget Pablo is the support. Um... But no, at this point, uh, I'm not going to be able to out-timer them, but I am going to be able to harass the shit out of them. And so, I do what I do. I spawn them specifically far away so that they run into them as opposed to running past them. If they do try and run past them, um, at least some of them will have the ability to attack. Now with this, I decide to go, fuck it, balls to the wall, summon here, there's two of them here, summon a bunch, they're going to try and run away. If I can get even one of them down, they cannot run away. Now look at this here. I'm literally forcing him to attempt to do this. It's kind of a wasted heavy there. He's really good on his dodges. I just need to get one of them down, and then they need to come back for them. That's what it is. Like, they, they cannot leave. The zone is here. They know it. They have to come back for these people. I wait for it. I wait for it. I time the heavy. I get it off. Good timing. Almost get him down. I just need to get a three off on him, and I can get it down. Ah, damn it, and I miss, of course. But he's still so low health, a few hits, and he is down. They are going to have to come back for him. And that is that is the use out of this evil Ash. They have to come back for him now. If they want to have him at the final objective, they're going to come for him. Now, I notice here, 
These guys are fine. They're going through traps. I've trapped this area. I'm not worried. Then I see, oh shit, I'm gonna leave them with some party basic units. Pablo is going to try and solo. And this is the tough part about the dark ones. Even one person can do a shit ton of damage. And Pablo did this before. He went way far ahead. And so if I can delay him, I've already delayed the others. They need to go bring people up and resurrect them. That's all Nobi's job. They're delayed sufficiently. I've got, I'm pretty sure I'm Max Demon at this point. Yeah, I'm Max Demon. So we've been really efficient with our upgrades. I see that he's just here dishing out some amulets, doing his best. I'm just going to try and delay him as much as possible. And then we'll go from there. So I start placing some traps for some elite units. Uh, I wait for like a half second there to see whether or not I should spawn. I do this just to scare the shit out of this guy. He's going to turn that corner and he is going to see an actual goddamn army behind him. And if anything, that's psychological. That That's going to make him panic. He's going to freak out. He's going to um, see that he is Max Fear, that kind of thing. Okay, there will be a bit of a time cut. I'm recording this multiple days apart. But now let's just go back to it where we last left off. I'm recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording. Where I last left off, he gets into this, um, into this thing and he starts running around. I'm just gonna start spawning more units because it hopes he'll break in the van. But no, he, he just decides to dip. He realizes he made a mistake. He's getting the hell out of here. And that's good. I'm fine with that. I've delayed him sufficiently. I've delayed everyone sufficiently. Fear is insane right now. Everyone's terrified. But now I see, okay, they're rushing down the boss. I don't care about Pablo, I'm just gonna go for it. And so here we go, they're gonna rush down the dark one. And here we go. Tribulite safe, let's place included. Evil Ash is about to come off cooldown. Here we go. This is where we snowball, boys. This is where we snowball. I get all of my swarms down, then I summon Evil Ash. I don't even need to get out of here. I don't know why they didn't get out of here. A lot of pressure, a lot of stuff is just straight up coming back to life. It doesn't matter what they're trying to do. Yeah, a lot of pressure, a lot of damage. I just see this guy, I'm not quite covering all the units. But then I see, oh god, of course, the worst of these bins. No need to use the entire time. The right side is just straight up rushing out. I'm just gonna go for it, delay them all I can. Wait, that is one, two. Let's stop doing something. That's what they're gonna do. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, and boom. Okay, I, I, I. Oh, yeah, we got a ton of pressure. Very, very confident. But one dead, one dead out. If I can deny this, we're good. I, I'm not worried at all. There's absolutely no bringing stuff back. Unless I like your recommendations, don't have much more. I'm not sure. I'm pretty much not. So, if I kill anyone, I'm pretty much game at this point. I've done enough pressure. I've done enough damage. And I'm not worried about any of it. It, it, it's quite a lot to deal with. Literally, I get another uh, summit bomb. Very nice. I, I noticed that over there, our new company has still dealing with those skeletons that I saw. They finally get cool. You know, it's time to finally help out with them. They tripped off and came out the way to go. And yeah, I can't go. I don't know. I, I decided to go for it. 
Demo Sorry if that was super loud and you couldn't hear me that entire time. Um, that's the end of this demo game. Uh, this is pretty much, you know, how it goes, that kind of thing. And yeah, this is, I really, really enjoy this, this build. And um, yeah, it definitely works, as you can see, even against people who know what they're doing. Um, big kudos to everyone involved. All the survivors played really, really well. Uh, QBD or Q8D, you made a small bit of a mistake running off like that, but otherwise, the Pablo, I could barely find him. Vendetta was fucking shredding basics, as you could see it, and this Bunny Azzy person was absolutely amazing in reviving and supporting their teammates. They did a great job. Um, overall, lots and lots and lots and lots of units, and um, yeah, very nice score all around. It was a very, very nice game. Everyone involved did a great, great job. Uh, now I'll just do the final little thing. I'll break down my uh, skill tree. One okay. Okay. So, just really, really, I turned off music because it got a little annoying. But anyways, here's the breakdown of um, skills. Um, and I'll point them out in relation to the game that I showed so that you can see which ones came into effect when. So obviously I based out, maxed out basic units, balance bar and their health, and bone rage, and war. I, I, I min-maxed basics literally as much as I could, because you can absolutely shit them out as Necromancer, especially with the gates of hell upgrade. I also had the boss, because, you know, having more bosses definitely helped at many, many points. There were points where it literally came down to the wire with summoning the boss. <laughs> Shut up, Ash. But no. Um, with that, it's, um, fairly self-explanatory. I got this just because I don't like spending that much energy on basics. 25% is a pretty big chunk, and it's, it's definitely worth it. Um, I see a lot of people going for the Infernal Revenue. I personally don't because 20% is a bit, but it's just not enough to warrant it, I don't think. But I do like this. Infernal Refill, 10%. That's really, really useful. Much more so than you would think. The, the ability to regenerate energy faster even when you're generating it on objectives, especially when you stack that with the passive regen if you have full-out Inferno energy upgraded in-game, it's a shit ton. That's what allowed me to spam out just stupid amounts of skeletons all the time. But spamming skeletons, even with the increased damage and the AoE, yada yada yada, that's not enough. That, that would not make this a decent build. And so there's the second part of it. The second part of it comes with the boss. His second ability, his skeleton resurrection, anything that dies in it comes back to life. You can go back and look at those moments. It, um, it works. And that is specifically because I have the expanded skeletal support upgrade, which brings it up to 15 meter range. 15 meters. Dems a lot. And then, I have 30 second duration. That is a lot, but all of that is nothing without this. I gotta tell you, this is the most bullshit thing in the game, and I will use it as long as I can until they nerf it. Not only do resurrected skeletons come back with full health, they get 40% increased health and damage, basic and elite units. This shit is fucking stupid. It, it not only stacks with this. So they do 60% more damage if they're resurrected. They're actually doing 150% bonus damage. Because there's a 70% and a 90% here. From the flautist. And they don't actually have that much health. They're getting, no, it's 50% it's damage reduction. So the, the, the health that they get, it's effectively doubling it. Which is fucking ridiculous. It, it makes a truly immovable armor of skeletons. Unless you have, like, tons of finishes spamming full support, it'll at least deal a lot of damage, because some hits are going to hit. Or you're just going to waste the shit out of your ammo. It, it just does a lot, and it can terrify the shit out of big teams because of skeletophobia, and the increased damage from skeletal injury because there's a ton nearby also helps. It just... It's really good at applying a shit ton of damage to literally everyone on an entire team, 
by just summoning hordes. And all you need is level 10 with the boss in Skeleton Resurrection. Even if he dies, his stuff will stick around for a little bit. And so you literally just make that area, yeah, you're not staying there, or you are sending a suicide notice to your entire team. Because you're basically just taking all the skeletons and directly putting milk into their veins. Or bones. But yeah. In any case, I hope someone has found some kind of benefit and or help in how to play Necromancer with this. This is how I play it, and I've had a lot of fun and success in doing so. And um, yeah, that's all I got.